Hello all, I'm Tom. And since this coronavirus disruption started, now quite a while ago, I've been hosting this vlog to eat beef jerky and talk to you on the internet. I'm not a food critic, so the beef jerky part is silly and pointless. But this vlog has let me explore some fun ideas with you, especially regarding game design. And I plan to keep doing it. So today is the 12th of January 2021. I'm still doing this vlog because it really wasn't about the year 2020. It was really about connecting through the pandemic. And that's still going on. It's very exciting to hear uh, that the vaccine is out there. People are getting it. I actually just talked to my doctor last week who said that she'd gotten her first shot in the arm the day before I saw her. So basically right around the 1st of January, my doctor got a shot. So that is something. Somebody's getting a shot somewhere. And I sure hope that a lot more people can get it soon, including me and including you. Um, so it's episode 56 or so, not a big round number. Um, let's get right to our picture that we're going to talk about today about games. I would like to talk about um, user-generated uh, goals. So as you can see from this Kotaku article, uh, somebody played a very popular game and in it did something quite amazing. Um, of course, it's all, you know, relative. It's only amazing within that game and within that thing. But still, people are like, wow, that was really amazing what they did. And I'm certain they put made a video of it and detailed it and stuff to show that what they did and how they did it. Um, but what I want to talk about is the kind of larger issue of what this speaks of from a game design point of view, which is very simple. It's a rule I learned a long, long time ago as a game developer, which is that you cannot choose how your players have fun with your game. More specifically, I mean that you can make a game that is intended to be played one way. Doesn't mean the players are going to play it that way. They're going to choose to play your game the way that is fun for them and not the way that you meant them to play the game. It seems like a simple rule, but I see game developers making the mistake over and over again of saying, well, the users aren't playing the game right. And because of that, I'm going to have to change the game to force them to play right. Um, and one of the most lovely things I saw regarding this in a very long time, which I'm certain, you know, I am not the only one to point out, hey, you know, this is, this is a game changer, this is a big deal, was in the very first 3D, um, uh, what's it called? <coughs> the very first time that people played uh, Grand Theft Auto in 3D, because that was, I think, on the PlayStation 2, and I had been playing it, and every time you hit the pause button, you didn't even have to go to a special screen. You didn't have to go to um, the special you know, points sub-menu or anything like that. Every time you pause the game, the screen came up, and part of the screen was taken up by a long list of achievements. And I don't mean just you know, how many missions you've done and how many enemies you've killed. Um, what was distinctive about this list of achievements was how silly and mundane it could be. You know, number of cars jumped over, sure, but also number of uh, footsteps taken, a number of miles gone, sure, but also a uh, number of uh, civilians run over and a uh, number of uh, meals eaten and number of stop signs smashed and so on and so forth. All of these very, like, you know, number of chickens killed, number of, you know, number of sunsets seen, this kind of thing. Um, and at first it was fun. It was like, oh, look at that. Ha ha. That's cool. You know, it's kind of silly. All this, you know, number of chickens. Ha ha. Um, but then that, as a player, that quickly was like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could do anything with the manhole covers or... I didn't know you could kill chickens in this game. So it automatically was kind of like a tutorial, just looking at this list of 
things you could theoretically do that the game would track for you told you more about how the game worked than you realized before. And then on top of all that, uh, you looked at the list and said, oh, well, number of planes flown. That sounds exciting. I am going to try to, you know, really work hard to fly planes so that that number can go up. And of course, if we you know, set the, the Wayback Machine for that particular game, Grand Theft Auto 3, which was the first 3D Grand Theft Auto, came out on the PlayStation 2. It came out right around the time of the falling of the Twin Towers and the attack on 9-11. And it certainly wasn't the first or last time that Rockstar Games, um, I think were the people who made it, um, had done something controversial with their game. And in this particular case, it wasn't that controversial. It's just that that happened, they were finishing up the game, and they realized that, yes, you could take off from the airport, you could take, steal a plane and fly it and crash it into the Twin Towers. Um, and they didn't want, you know, they didn't want at that time to be, you know, called a murder simulator or, a, you know, a, a terrorist simulator or something. So they literally and, and um, uh, intentionally clipped the wings off of the flyable airplane so that it was in almost impossibly hard to actually get it up and fly it long enough to actually crash it into the Twin Towers in the video game. Uh, this is kind of a side thing, because it's not what I wanted to talk about. It's just, you know, it's an interesting little nugget of video game history. Um, but again, what I thought was really interesting about Grand Theft Auto 3 was its nice long list of both fantastical and mundane uh, uh, um, achievements that were tracked by the game. It gave players not only a way to say, hey, I didn't know you could do that, but also gave players a way to say, hey, if I do that weird thing, the game will keep track of it. Maybe even reward me for getting a hundred of them. Um, and that goes back to the screenshot that I was showing you. And the general idea that players make their own fun players choose their own goals. Many players don't, but many players do. And their goals are different. This particular player chose to make a super impossible shot with a bow and arrow. Um, and as a game developer, I'm entirely comfortable with the idea that I should build a world and let people play in it. I should not tell them how they can have fun. I have certainly seen from the first to the last day of my career, that no, people play games differently in different ways, different people. There is, as a game developer, I basically don't have any ability to tell them they cannot play the game that way. Uh, so I don't even try and I don't want to. Uh, and kudos to this guy for finding a goal that he can be happy about. And kudos to Nintendo for making a game that is flexible enough and broad enough that players can find their own goals, choose their own goals, and have fun in the way they think is fun. So that's what I wanted. To, that's just what I wanted to say about about that image. Okay, let's get to the main event, which is the jerky. I do not think that I have eaten Oberto teriyaki beef jerky on this channel. However, this is the 56th episode, and I've actually realized that I've done a terrible job of documenting all this jerky. So, I'm pretty sure I have not eaten this flavor yet before, but I can't say for sure, because I really haven't documented it. So, actually, I'm going to go back in the next few weeks and kind of add to the description in the videos to make sure that every video description details what is the actual jerky I'm eating that week so that I don't get into a situation like this again where I'm like, have I already done this on this thing? Don't think I have, so let's try Oberto Teriyaki Beef Jerky. <laughs> I don't expect it to be super bold. Here's a nice piece. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So this is tasty. It's not bad. It tastes very store-bought, though. I would not say that it's completely unbold, but uh, mostly it's just completely inoffensive. Um, however, it has some things going for it. It's a nice texture. It's not shoe leather, and it's not um, it's not incredibly boring. Uh, it's just you know completely middle of the road reasonable stuff. This is about the, I would expect this is the best quality you can get from the corner store. That's how it tastes to me. Not bad at all. Even enjoyable. Not Stroyo's level of bold, but then what else is? Uh, and generally I like it. Good stuff. Alright. So, finally, let's talk about the mailbag. Uh, last episode that I did, I casually mentioned that it was the end of the year, which meant it was my anniversary. And wonderful, I got three people wishing me a, an anniversary on YouTube. Adam Para, Jeet Grenoll, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and Patrick Thompson all wish me a happy birthday. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And I hope that you have uh, good uh, anniversaries and birthdays when they came around for you, too. Um, okay. Anyway, Oberto Teriyaki Beef Jerky. Perfectly acceptable. Mm, fine jerky. Excellent. Not bad. Especially if you, like me, uh, don't really like the hot stuff, don't really like the spices. Well, there definitely wasn't any in the teriyaki beef jerky. But having said that, it also was not tasteless. It was perfectly good. So, all right. That's what I have for you this week. But we'll do more in the future. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot.